Only children of Reddit. What is something that people with siblings don't understand? When your parents die, there's no one else in the world who knows exactly how it feels. You're the only human being on the planet that knew those people as parents. You are completely, totally alone. All of your parents' hopes and dreams fall on your shoulders. And all of the responsibility of taking care of them when they're older. That if we marry another only child, our children will have zero cousins, aunts, or uncles. Now I'm older I've realized that I will be alone when they are gone. Also when the time goes and one parent dies I will be nearly all the other one is left with. I don't feel adult enough to have to deal with that. Your parents will follow you to the ends of the earth. My mom is almost completely dependent on me for companionship because growing up it was only me and her. It's nice to be close. But now that I'm older and independent, it's awkward when she jokes that she wants to move in with me and my partner when I know a part of her is very serious. My favorite board game is Clue and Battleship. Imagination lets me play other board games by myself. Except those two. I am great at socializing with adults, not so much my peers. The fear of moving too far away because if something were to happen to either parent, there is nobody else to be there the way you can. Especially hard as an only child with split parents. That when they both go you are truly alone. I don't currently have a partner and my father passed two years ago. It's just my mother left. I don't speak to my family that live in the same state so if when my mother goes and I'm still single and dart I'm it. I have friends. Great friends but as for family mum is it. If you have trouble with your parents you don't really have someone to talk to who is that close to your parents as you are and who understands like you do. So it is only you who has to deal with your parents frustration of life. Their disappointment in you. Their anger because you don't live your life like they wanted you to do. Edit. Thank you for the gold. I've never been punched or hit or kicked. I think for people with siblings that's surprising because siblings often get physical in their arguments. Getting in trouble and not having someone else to pin the blame on. How your friends become your siblings, but for your friends with siblings you don't become theirs. Growing up, and still, I had have a core group of friends one is an only child and the others all had brothers and sisters. I feel closer to this set of friends than almost anyone else after 25 plus years, even my husband, but I'm always aware that they have siblings who they are closer to than me. For me that's the loneliest part. Edit. Case in point, when I got married they were all bridesmaids in my wedding. But when they got married I wasn't a bridesmaid in any of their weddings because they kept it family only for the participants. They had absolutely every right to have their weddings be precisely what they want. And it was something I felt very aware of. When I got to college, and even after college, I found it difficult to have roommates because I was used to things being just my way in my living space as I hadn't had to share that space with other peers for years while growing up. Took me a long time to learn to cohabit it with others. I'm only child. Eat super slowly. Everyone I have a meal with comments that I eat super slowly. Wasn't until I had dinner with friend. Eldest of six, and her family that I realized the fight for food. Wife and I are both only children. Net result, our kids do not have any aunties, uncles or cousins. And we had a big family in part because we were only children. The pressure from family to have kids and to have a family of your own is quite high. Especially if you have other plans. You are both the golden child and the scapegoat. When you do good. Praise rains upon you. When you duck up, you get their undiluted wrath. Edit. This really blew up. I'd like to clarify that while my childhood was sometimes frustrating and confusing due to the dual roles of golden child scapegoat, my folks weren't abusive nor in retrospect do I believe they were intentionally manipulative. Sometimes I say the words my sister or my brother out loud. Because it feels so strange. Because as an only child. I'll never be able to say that. That sometimes. We don't mind just having our parents for company. I need my alone time. I'm not being antisocial. I'm not a hermit. I had 20 plus years of keeping myself entertained and it's exhausting to have constant chatter in the background now. Sometimes I just want to be alone with my thoughts. 
How much it sucks growing up and not having someone to play with you. Both my parents worked two jobs when I was a kid. So I had to make up games that I could play with myself or just kick a soccer ball against the wall. I remember I got a really cool Star Wars Monopoly game for Christmas one year. But then I realized I had no one to play it with unless I had friends over. So it spent a lot of time gathering dust. It did get better when I got a dog. But playing with a dog is not entirely the same as a sibling. Watching my friends and cousins fight with their siblings was terrifying. It was a great relief to return to my books and video games. When your parents have a huge fight you have to sit through it all by your own. There is no one to distract you from that or who shares your agony. Edit. Thanks for sharing all your stories. I can realter so much of you. Edit too. And a big thank you for all the older siblings who stood up for or comforted their younger ones when your parents fought. This might have been a bigger service than you can imagine. Give them all a hug. The ability to isolate yourself totally from others. Forming shallow connections with people is easy. You have to be able to do that. Older people are usually much easier to get along with. That's all you've ever known. Forming deeper connections is incredibly difficult. You adjust to the voice in your head being a trusted advisor. Usually the only sounding board you have access to and you know what. He's a bastard. You don't have the ability to look at anyone as being an honest to god nice person. You only see them working towards bettering their own position and probably screwing you over in the process. Things get interesting after you realize that isn't always the case. Some people are genuinely nice people. All mate in your coconut promptly slams on the brakes and screams duck in hell. What have you been putting in your guts? Your scones gone rotten. Whilst the part of your brain that isn't psychotic pathetically whimpers well. I don't think so. I mean, every rational indicator actually says this person is a bloody good egg. All coconut jumps back in with you ducking nitwit. You know they're playing the long game. Must we do this every time? In short I think growing up by oneself leads to unhealthy amounts of introspection. Rumination. A destructive level of suspicion and an odd inability to deal with unpurposed interaction with people. That is sitting at a dinner table. What the ever loving duck is with that? I'm an only child and an only grandchild son on both my mother's and my father's side. And it's not like my parents were only children. Both have siblings who married so I have 8 aunts and uncles but no first cousins. It made for a very different upbringing because all of our holidays and family gatherings. There was no kids table. I sat with the adults and had to have discussions with adults all the time. Which I believe helped me intellectually. But there were so many times where I would just want to be a kid. It's kind of ironic. I would get lots of toys at Christmas and my birthday, but never had anyone to play with them with. As for what people don't understand, many people have already touched on this, but just the immense pressure of expectations. Also every conversation you're the only millennial who now has to speak for an entire generation in front of 10 adults. When you become an only child as an adult be prepared for never ending side careful lectures. My mom must think that I'm an idiot now. It's like. I'm just checking so see if the new season of that show is on Netflix yet. Well. Be careful. May or may not be a slight exaggeration. That I need my quiet times. I don't mind being alone at times. I am used to it and nowadays I kinda need it. My girlfriend who has siblings had to get used to that. In the beginning she took it personal when I said that I preferred some time alone. Apart from that this is a silly question. I don't know how my life would have been if I had siblings. I would have been a very different person. One thing is that I probably don't really understand a sibling dynamic. How close or not close people are with their siblings. I really don't mind being an only child. It's the only way I have ever known. Relationships are hard. I've always envied people who had not just siblings. Because, yeah. Learning to have another person in your space is hard, but siblings of the opposite sex. Growing up with an understanding of how the opposite sex thinks feels about their body, about friendships, how they deal with fears and insecurities, and react to power struggles among their peers. All that it is a complete ducking mystery to only children. And it's a complete mind duck when you run head on into it in your first relationship. The complete lack of social skill development. My parents basically let me do my own thing when I was little and nobody I went to school with lived near me. It was just me and my PS2 for many many years. 
There are some weird things I still do today that my fiance will often point out. If she hadn't, I would have never noticed. I'm 30 and an only child. Spent the last 14 years helping the family look after sick and dying relatives. Because we were all they had. Nursed my father, two grandmothers and grandfather through cancer, dementia and old age. Cleaned things and seen things no grandchild should ever have to. Even one sibling would have made this whole process much much easier. For any parents reading this just two bits of advice. One your child will want and need time to just enjoy life and cut loose without a purpose. Give this to them but let them know your clothes if needed. To think about your own future. My mother is essentially a shut in aside from one stroke two weekly grocery trips since my father passed. No matter your age try to keep your independence as long as you can and start a payment plan for your own funeral. You can pay it off over 20 years and it won't bankrupt your kids. I'm curious if other only children were very sensitive. I definitely got a big shock going into school and encountering the cruelty of children for the first time. Having been raised by a single loving mother makes you a pretty big target for bullying when you're that naive. Parent of an only child here. After a lot of debate we decided to stop at one kid. We aren't rich and never will be and it seemed fiscally irresponsible to have two kids. Reading these responses I feel like I really really ducked up as a father. Edit. Thank you everyone for your supportive responses. The overwhelming opinion seems that be that so long as I'm an active and caring father my kid will be fine. I still worry constantly about her social development. But I'm a bit socially weird myself and have 4 siblings. So clearly that didn't help. I'll continue to do my best to stay active in her life. And ensure she gets into preschool and peer programs as soon as she's able. Edit 2. I'm really humbled by everyone's personal replies. Even if I don't reply to everyone. I have read every post and am taking the advice and stories to heart. Please keep them coming. There's no person of approximately my age in my family. I've got one cousin but she's 20 years older than me so I've always perceived her like another aunt. Her children on the other hand are 10 and 15 years younger than me and we don't even meet much. Because of that I kinda cannot grasp the concept of having a non-hierarchical relationship with your relatives or basically having a relative who's also a buddy of yours. All of these answers mixed into one huge it storm. I remember a few years ago in English class we had to write a speech about whatever we wanted to talk about, as long as it related to the question. Which was something like what bothers you that other people don't understand, to the class. I was the only only child in that class of 27 and so I decided to write about what being an only child was like, and hope that by the end of my speech people would maybe not entirely change their opinion on the matter, but have a little bit more understanding. Having finished my speech in front of the class, I asked everyone at the end if they kind of got the concept now of how unlucky it felt to be in that situation. After a pause I was just met with laughter and choruses of whatever. You don't know how easy you have it. Why are you complaining etc. That was a ritty day. Edited for clarity and more detail. When you get bullied at school. There is literally no one to back you up. Sure. Having siblings doesn't automatically mean that they will be cool siblings. And having friends help too but most of the time. There is no older sibling to show you the ropes in anything or any backup from any younger ones. It is almost always you. Alone. Against every scummy duckers in the world. Edit. This stretches all the way to adulthood too. Real boredom and loneliness. I know what it's like to spend a whole day occupying myself. I think I can largely credit my only child experience with how creative I am. I spent time drawing or inventing stories with my toys. Building things and dreaming. I think this general thought process has translated well to my everyday life problem solving and designing as an aspiring architect. Edit. Grammar. Selfishness. Really. There's a level of selfishness that you just can't shake off if you grew up as an only child. Understand that only children don't have to share their favorite toy. No need to share food. No reason to fight for attention. Sure, you learn in school that sharing is caring, but deep down, you don't understand, why do you have to share your skittles? I find it hard to relate to other people. Since you spend your childhood mostly alone or with parents and older people, that is until you get friends, and the idea of having someone on your level is alien. 
I found being an only child a very isolating experience and for the longest time I wanted a sibling. I often wondered how different my life would have been. Would I have been any different? I definitely think I would have found it easier to make friends and be more social. It took me far too long to be able to fit in and even then I forewent a lot of things I enjoyed to avoid being alone. Like books, guitar and games, in favor of more extroverted social things like sports, events and drinking etc. Even with all that, I find it far too easy to fall back into introversion. It's like slipping into a pair of comfortable shoes you haven't worn for a while. I also tend to find that people coming from large families have a sense of unity that an only child has to build for themselves. I had a poor family life so I didn't think of myself as a part of something for most of my life, and when I compare my life to certain people who always have family to rely on, it used to make me sad. Despite it obviously being a wholesome thing, it did help me it pick my friends more carefully as I got older and even though it was a rough childhood I can safely say I found my family who like me for my faults and don't necessarily enjoy everything I enjoy. The pressure of being an only child. Put on you by your family, parents. For example the pressure to succeed. The pressure to take care of your aging parents. You are the one to carry the legacy. You will be blamed for ruining your family or making it greater than it ever was. We also seem to be a bit more content with being alone and are a bit more emotionally mature due to only speaking to grown-ups our entire lives except for school and friends. At the same time we have trouble making friends a bit more but that's more due to us looking for someone that's just as content as we are in ourselves. Surprise no one said this the one perk is dare I say. Inheritance. The older child is responsible. The middle child is ducked up. The younger child is spoiled. The only child is all of these. You must be so spoiled. But I had to buy my own car my own games my own food for a time and help out the household because my family wasn't well off. Also all for the chores that my friends would share with their brothers were all mine. My parents came from huge families my dad a mechanic my mom the daughter of a farmer and with 5 acres to tend to I spent a lot of time doing yard work because no one, including my parents, understood that the kids chores were only given to one kid. My GF and I are both 25 and both grew up as only children. We both have half siblings we didn't live with or see that often at all. And compromise selfishness is the biggest issue in our relationship. It sounds ridiculous. But even such little things as who's choosing what we watch next can lead to big arguments and we put most of that down to the fact we never had to compromise for anything as a child. So while we're old enough to understand that we need to compromise, it goes against our gut instinct and leaves a bad taste when we don't get our own way. We also have trouble with cohabiting at times, have lived together for 5 stroke 6 months now. Because we are so used to being on our own at home and therefore having our own way. Except for things our parents decided obviously. I definitely think we'd argue less had we been used to living with a peer. I.e. anyone that's not our parents. As small things wouldn't trigger us the way they do currently. My friends used to laugh at how much only child syndrome I unintentionally have. And I used to tell them they're making it up and it's not true. I'm now starting to reconsider lol. That my best company is my own company. I enjoy being around others and socializing. But I cherish the times when I again find myself all alone. How you end up keeping toxic friendships with awful kids because it's better than being alone. Speaking strictly for myself. I desire the lasting relationships you have with your siblings and seek them out in my social setting. With very limited success. The responsibility of taking care of one's parents. Most of my friends didn't understand what an undertaking it was when my mom got sick last year. I was her poor and responsible for all the decisions. I had to be available for everything. Court dates. Meetings with social workers. Hospice planning. Most of my friends have one sibling who could help out or they could tag team. I carried a case of documents in my car so if I was called when not at home I could look up answers. Also trying to plan a funeral as the only one responsible is ridiculously stressful. I couldn't find a place to hold it. I spent 6 hours one day just calling places to see if there was a free spot. That we didn't ask to be an only child. It wasn't our decision. That for a lot of us. The fact that we didn't have siblings is because our parents couldn't afford it. Edit. Whoa. 
Okay, I get it. We've all got our troubles. Lesson learned. Post without context repent at leisure and all that business. In my limited experience. That is. A sample size of one. I was always treated by my non only child peers like I had an easy ride. I'm not trying to be victim. Just trying to answer the question. Go forth and be loved y'all. How we may be wishing we had a sibling. Everyone's like oh you must have been lonely growing up. No. I was alone. But not lonely. I loved it. I had my own room. My own toys and books and my own TV. I might not have been able to have all that if I had siblings. My mom had to have a bunch of surgeries just to be able to have me and they spent a few years trying to have another one because they didn't want me growing up an only child like they did. I'm glad they couldn't have any more. A lot of people I know don't even get along with their siblings. Both my in-laws have no contact with their siblings and if they do it quickly becomes an argument. Duck that. People with siblings usually have a weird set of prejudices. They think that being an only child means you always felt lonely. This is false because you can make friends. Plus, my friends from when I was a kid today are like my brothers. They think that I want everything for myself. Why do they think this? You learn to share with your friends and at school. They think that an only child feels that the world orbits around them. Sometimes. Successes are mine. But so are the failures. If something fails it's my failure. But you outgrow that because when you are an adult you become very critical of things. For x, new cluster duck, not mine. But I know the feeling dude. In summary, people from big families tend to think that your life is in some way dysfunctional. My brother died when I was 8. And then I began my venture into only childhoodism. The pressures to be this perfect. Happy glowing ball of sunshine all the time lead me into having a nervous breakdown by the time I was 16. Having been on both sides of the fence, I can tell you that the type of isolation and introversion experienced by only children is far more profound than that by children with siblings. There is truly a sense of absolute desolation at times that no one else can console. I found it easy and natural to make friends as a kid before my brother died. And after it was like I had no safety net if somebody rejected me. I became very sarcastic. And still am. Making friends mostly by seeing who else likes to be mercilessly picked on. Lovingly of course. The pressure to have kids. To keep the family name going. To surround myself with a brood of youngsters who would never have to endure the same thing as I did. Almost completely clouded my view for years of what I actually wanted in life as well. Just how lonely it can be. I never really had friends growing up. Interacting with my parents and other adults had me feeling like kids my age were immature. I never had to compete for their attention and in some cases I am less independent simply because I knew my parents were there to help bail me out when necessary. I'm from a huge family. I have one child right now with no plans to have another. At least not in the near future. Any tips from other only children how I can not duck my kid up too much? Edit. Wow. Thank you all for the overwhelming number of responses. Goodbye inbox. All the answers and tips really gave me confidence in the path I am helping my daughter go down. I feel I am parenting the best way for her and I am giving her a great opportunity to help her become a confident, adjusted and balanced individual. Thank you all. As an only child I never learned how to play fight. Because of this I weirdly lack the skill of not using all of your power when play fighting with someone. I just go full ballistic and end up hurting the other person each time even though I don't mean to. I simply don't understand how to physically limit the amount of power I use. Also food envy. Horrible food envy. After a third date there's no way on earth we'll share that milkshake. You get your own. I'm a 35 year old only child. No one understands how I can be loud and talk to myself when I'm, mostly, alone. And how quiet I am when I'm around others. Everyone seems to be posting the negative. But there are positives too. I grew up as an only child in a not very well off family. But I got by just fine. You can have time to yourself whenever you want it. You never have a fight over anything if there's only one of it. You learn a great sense of imagination. Whatever your parents wouldn't have been able to afford to have. They only need to afford one of. So unless it's something huge. Expensive and unnecessary. You sometimes get things you wouldn't have been able to otherwise. 
this actually worked well. Because my parents wouldn't have been able to afford to send two kids to college. But they could afford one. Your parents never pick a favorite. No fighting over friends love interests. No fighting over toys. No fighting over what to eat that night. No fighting over share this or that. Generally no fighting over anything. Usually the case without siblings. But nevertheless. A plus point. You can sit wherever you want in the car depending on where your parents sit. You tend to get more attention from your parents. As they don't need to split the attention. I'm sure there are other positives as well. But this was just what I could think of off the top of my head. Just wanted to show it's not all doom and gloom. A lot of it is just what you make of it. I remember my mom being really upset once because one of my friend's moms told my mom that she is selfish for not giving me a brother or a sister. I yikes. I can only speak for myself here but I think we only children have weaker spirits. Siblings do awful it to each other but that builds a lot of character and makes those kids stronger and more resilient. Those of us without siblings have these same interactions. But they come from different people and later in our lives. We get torn down by bosses, by co-workers, by boyfriends, girlfriends. It takes us longer to learn some of these lessons and so we don't bounce back as quickly. That you'll rarely hear your own name said in your house. It was just me and mum for most of my life. So there was never a need for either of us to say each other's names. I barely called her mum. She rarely called me by my name. Only when I had ducked up did my name trail slowly and loudly up the stairs. With every vowel dragged out to punctuate the feeling of impending doom. Instead of using names. We just spoke for example. T. Can we change the channel? Go to bed dinner is ready etc. Also leftovers. I've noticed that people with lots of siblings don't appreciate leftovers in quite the same way me and my other only child friends do.